think everyone has a dream of seeing the world. Or at the least, a curiosity to discover what's out there. To experience something new, to feel different emotions, to escape the limits of their imagination and chase something harder than themselves. Dude, it was probably the most intense travel experience that I've ever had. I was only in every country for like maybe three, four days max. The most valuable, important gift that you can give to someone else is your undivided attention and showing that like you're present there for them and that nothing else matters in the world besides like this moment that I'm like sharing with you. I think beyond just like creating with purpose, people should just like apply that to their day-to-day -day life. Just like act with purpose, like act with intention. What's up guys and welcome to another episode. This is the Created to Create podcast and I'm your host, Ben Gluntz. We believe we're created to create um, and we believe that's for a purpose. What that purpose is, well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, today I'm recording from Los Angeles, California and I'm with my good friend, Jacob Farafino. Dude, so stoked to be here. So stoked to just jump into some awesome conversation and Dude. just enjoy. Enjoy this moment. Of course, bro. I mean, we have plenty of talks like by ourselves. So to be able to record one is, is super cool. I'm oh, stoked. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, dude, it's it's really cool to have you on and and like um so cool to watch you like grow and hone your craft over the past like year and a half, two years that I've known you. Um, dude, it's it's insane what you do. Your edits, the style of filmmaking and videography and your creative vision. Um it's just a roller coaster of emotions and it's really cool to watch and really cool to see even behind the scenes of your work. Um, you've worked with brands like Qatar Airways, you've worked with brands like DJI, Beautiful Destinations, mm -hmm. um, and FIFA, which is really cool. Yeah, and I we'll do. talk about that in a second. But yeah, it's just so, so dope to to see your work, bro. And uh it, it speaks for itself. And you've just kind of like positioned yourself in a really unique place in like the travel space and you've taken advantage of dope opportunities. So yeah, it's, it's cool to watch you grow, bro. Dude. Yeah. Thank you of course for having me on the podcast and just thank you for all your kind words, man. I mean, I'm always like a work in progress and always, you know, this, yeah. this is like been an absolute roller coaster of a journey just from getting started and picking up my camera for the first time to like where I am now, which is, unreal the amount of awesome experiences that i've had mm. and um dude everything's led up until this moment to this podcast so exactly bro it's, the provident uh, the providential nature of god oh, i yeah. freaking love it <laughs> <laughs> dude let's talk about fifa okay fifa okay. you worked on a really cool project this year 65 days of travel 14 countries 40 destinations you shot so much and edited so much like what a whirlwind that must have been. Oh, dude, it was probably the most intense travel experience that I've ever had. Um, and you've I mean, traveled a lot. So yeah. that's like saying a lot. <laughs> um, but you can imagine just like I was only in every country for like maybe three, four days max. Um, wow. And just like all the flights getting to different locations. I mean, honestly, it was a combination of flights, train rides. Um Ubers, taxis, like every mode of transportation that you can imagine. Crazy. Um, a tuk tuk. Did you ever go on a tuk tuk or like no, something, I, something oh, similar? Actually, did I? No, I didn't. I don't think I like visited any countries that like um, use those. But okay, okay, yeah. You went to Argentina, which was probably the one that kind of like made an impression on me the most because oh, yeah. the atmosphere there for the World Cup was absolutely insane. Obviously, oh. because they won it, but like. Just Dude, the yeah, culture down there. They're, I mean, they're so passionate about soccer. And unfortunately, I wasn't there when they won the final. <laughs> but um, if you saw like on social media, like what like what the the, the whole environment was after Insane. after they won, it was yeah. it was like probably like a once in a lifetime moment in the history. Yeah. Just like everyone crowding into like mm. the town square. I mean, the whole city, like it was just Shut Everyone, down yeah, completely shut down. as it should. Cause dude, they've been waiting for that moment for their whole entire yeah. lives. <laughs> yeah. And then Leo Messi just like, just pulled through the goat. <laughs> it was emotional to watch and I'm yeah. not even an Argentinian Argentinian or anything. So 
yeah, yeah man. I can't imagine what what it was like there. Um, but you travel quite a bit. Like you, this is a regular thing for you now. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's hard for us even to hang out sometimes. Yeah, I know. We're I think always I've only like been gone. in town for like maybe three or four months out of this year. No, um, the rest crazy. has just been on the go. Yeah. <laughs> well, what what's like uh what's that like for you and kind of like how does that shape your mentality with life um it was a bit hard to adapt to at first um because you can imagine how unstructured like my lifestyle can be mm-hmm. um but now i've been doing this for a good two two and a half years just like this travel lifestyle yeah and i've been able to kind of learn a system of balance that works for me and so um I really enjoy going on these trips because it, I can just immerse myself in these cultures. I can, um, I can just be in like full focus, like work mode, just mm-hmm. shooting content that I enjoy. Um, and then I can like look forward to coming back home, resetting, kicking it with family and friends. Um, I don't know, just doing simple things yeah. that I necessarily can't do when I'm abroad. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't know, just playing video games. <laughs> You don't or, have a switch um, or anything. You don't take any. Uh, I do have an Nintendo Switch. Okay, I, okay. I, I get pretty dialed in with like Legend of Zelda <laughs> on like my plane rides. <laughs> I was gonna say, bro, that's those are clutch for plane rides, oh, especially yeah. the long ones, like fifteen Absolutely. hour ones. Dude, I get I get lost in it. Like makes the whole plane ride fly by. <laughs> yeah, bro. Can you sleep on planes? Do you usually um, fall asleep? I can. Like, I'm a lot of people like know me that that I can just kind of like sleep anywhere. Yeah. Um, but it's like it's never like quality sleep. It's just it's Obviously. always pretty trash. So yeah, I just kind of use that time period to just either catch up on TV shows, play video games, and then mm. I just crash out as soon as I land. Yeah. yeah, you don't like to like work on like flights as well. Um, only like super like low brain activity editing. So yeah. like making selects. Yeah, like choosing music. But like if I want to like edit like a reel or something, like I can't. Yeah, can't do that. It's a very stressful environment to try to do like something like that into. Yeah, maybe yeah. if I was like flying business class and there I had you that go. I had, like, yeah. super <laughs> luxurious mindset. Um, but yeah, if you're like cramped between like two people, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's just like my brain just like can't. It's like already no. cramped enough. I need space to breathe. Dude, yeah. true. Yeah, sometimes I get on like tight deadlines, and so I'll find myself like editing on a plane, and it's just the worst. Oh yeah, bro, it's oh, the dude. worst. It's never fun. No. Uh, w- dude, what's one of your like favorite places you've gone in the world and why? Um, I mean, dude, the, the world has so many beautiful countries to offer, um, each with their own things that make them unique. But I will have to say that at the very top of the list, like a place that I could envision myself potentially like basing myself out of, yeah. um, would probably be Cape Town. Really? Um, Why is that? Dude, it's such a beautiful place. I've heard to it's live. beautiful. Yeah. Um, it's a very like outdoorsy, naturey um, environment to be in. Like, like when you wake up, you literally have these huge mountains, um, like in your front yard, mm-hmm. and these crazy rolling clouds over them. Wild. It's like the most beautiful thing to like wake up to. I bet. Um, and because it is like a pretty um, cloudy climate over there. It makes for some of the most insane sunrises and sunsets you can imagine. I mean, just like all the colors reflecting off the water, reflecting off the clouds. It's, it's, it's really special. That's beautiful. Dude. Yeah. If you're like an outdoorsy person, it's like the place to even hiking. Dude. Some of those, yeah. Beautiful hikes you can imagine. Dude, I bet bro. We'll have to go sometime. We'll have to go. Yeah. (laughs) Um, speaking of traveling, like, uh, like for me personally, like when I travel, I, I get a lot of perspective from culture mm-hmm. and just seeing how people live and um, how they kind of have worked through different tough times in their life too. And like, I don't know, I, I think like when we travel, um, it can be easy to just get caught up in like the fun moments. But for me, yeah. I love connecting with as many people as I can um, and gaining that perspective and stuff. Um, cause it just kind of like helps me live my life more to the fullest and mm-hmm. understand like the plan that God has for my life and, and how I can like lean into that and trust him with it. Do you experiencing like, like, do you experience something similar to that when you travel? 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think travel is one of the greatest teachers like anyone can ever have. You can just mm. learn so much about how other cultures function and see how differently people live. And I think being able to expose yourself to so many different cultures and, and see how they function with a completely set, different set of values um, can really like help you, you know, take those values into your own life back home. Yeah. Um, and I do feel like I'm a much wiser person after these past two years of travel. Um, and some of the, like the, the moments that like really impacted me are those moments where I'm in a culture that is just not nearly as fortunate as, um, you know, back here in the U S where we mm -hmm. have an abundance of resources mm -hmm. to help just simplify our lifestyle. And, and, um, the country is like, I'd, I'd say like on the most extreme end was probably Namibia. Mm, okay. When I was over there. And that's in South America or South Africa. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. South Africa is like the southernmost like country in yeah. Africa. And then like right above it on the West coast is Namibia. Okay, cool. Um, it's a very remote country. Um, very like largely removed from like the material world. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a lot of nature. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was like road tripping there with my friends, I mean, in between destinations and um, all like all the touristy spots, it was like eight to eleven hour drives. Oh my god! Which gosh. is like nothing yeah. in between, just desolate plains, um, but also a lot of it filled with just wildlife, um, yeah, like antelopes, <laughs> wildebeest. Um, and to put in perspective, I'm sure an eight to eleven hour drive in Namibia is drastically different than an eight to 11 hour drive in America. Oh, like yeah. it, it's not like you have like massive freeways where you just cruise and watch Netflix in the back of a car, you know, like with your homies. No, nah, dude, it's straight like <laughs> dirt road, like no, no connection like to there, bumping. <laughs> nothing, bro. Like you're, you're so detached from like the real world. Um, yeah. we're not even, I don't know if the real world is like, you're just so detached from like normal normalcy uh, yeah. from what you grew up with. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but, you know, being in that super like isolated environment is honestly just like a really nice time yeah. for reflection. Yeah. Um, Cause you're not having to think about like um, replying to people on social media. You're yeah. not thinking about any of like these distractions that are, you know, consume most of our day to day lives. You're just like, it's just you, like the homies, mm -hmm. um, and just like being present in like the nature of God, um, yeah. especially with like the rhinos and the dude. elephants. Like, dude, it's such a crazy <laughs> experience. Like, you know, being right next to these animals and like their natural habitat, mm -hmm. you're like, wow, this is like what life is at its like most bare and like raw mm -hmm. form. Yeah. Um, and it was also really awesome being able to like meet the locals where like, that's like their day to day life, man. They, mm -hmm. they don't have, they don't deal with social media. They don't deal with, um, all the material materialism that mm -hmm. like is such a big part of American culture. Um, at the very like basics, like all they really have is their family and their friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and like even like their like their housing situation they're literally living in huts made of scrap yeah, metal yeah. and sticks and like whatever they can find like around them they're literally like living off the bare minimum yeah but at the same time they're some of the most like happy individuals i've ever met like mm. always like have a smile on their face so like welcoming and hospitable people yeah um and it's so cool which is crazy because we as Americans think that having all the materialistic things like give you the ability to kind of be happy. They're like, yeah. Oh, well, if you're taken care of on every front to the max, then you'll be able to kind of like focus on the good things in life. And that just proves that that's yeah. totally not true. I mean, it's, you're never going to be truly satisfied and like, no matter how much like you buy, you have to realize that, um, you know, if you were like to lose like everything tomorrow, if you like, lost your house 
you like lost all your camera gear, which is, God I know, forbid. very scary God thought. forbid. Don't go to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> um, you like really have to think about like what you would be left with. And there's, there's levels to that. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the, I, you, you know, you remove like all the materialistic things out of your life and what you're left with is like your family, your mm. friends, like the people around you, the community around you. And I do think that's a really big reason why community is so important mm-hmm. um, because they're going to be there to support you mm. um, when everything else mm. is removed from your life. Yeah. And then, you know, another level on top of that is like a really, um, you know, real but dark kind of reality is that, you know, eventually mm. everyone passes on to like the next mm. life. And, yeah. and a lot of people, um, I mean, life is a gift and yeah. it can be taken at any moment. Yeah. You know, imagine if like, it, it is a dark thought, but like imagine like all your family like dies in a car crash. Like who mm. are you? left with yeah who do you Um, turn to yeah and that's where i think god has like a very Mm. um important role and if if not the most important role in everyone's life because he will be there for you no matter what what. yeah bro Um, i totally agree with that it's wild to like think about those realities because they are dark and it's like i don't want my family to die like i don't want i don't want my brothers and sisters to like pass away You know, death is like a scary thing, but you're totally right, bro. Like, and I think like the peace that comes from that relationship with God as well, just giving you like a solid rock to cling to. Mm -hmm. And he talks about that, like in the word of God as well, Um, like building your foundation on the solid rock of God, because when life comes, when the hurricane comes, whole host of lemons just knocks out your house. Um, It's just crazy. Like what can happen in life and we see it like on the news every day, mm-hmm. you know, and it can be easy to just be like, Oh, well that, that'll never happen to me. But what if it does, you know? Yeah. And like, who are you clinging to? Um, that's so important, bro. Is that something that you've kind of like always, um, conceptualized or, or like that relationship with God that you've always had, or was there like a moment in time that it really kind of hit you? Um, I mean, I've always like my, like my faith is like, been a constant work in progress and i feel like i've only been like really growing it growing into it recently Mm -hmm. um and it's i've only been able to do that through a lot of deep self-reflection on like my past yeah and how i got to this moment in my life yeah um because there's just like so many different things that have kind of come together to like mold me into to the person that I am today yeah. and to allow me to be this far ahead in my career at my age. Um, just so many like fortunate scenarios that like, you know, it's, it's like if one of these things did like, didn't happen, I wouldn't be here where I am today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like the providential nature of God of like planning out, you know, like how you're gonna, um, like his plan for your life and uh, being able to navigate that and know that, you know, even if something happens here, there's a reason for that. And you kind of start to see it as you progress through life and like look back in the rear view mirror. Yeah. I mean, I think God has a plan for everyone. And I know like a way that a lot of people see that is just everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like this whole butterfly effect almost. I mean, ever since like the moment that we're born, like the life choices that we make, the people that we surround ourselves with, um, the opportunities that we're getting, like we're all like a product of all these collective things. Mm -hmm. And if I look back at my career and, um, which is just like a small part of like all of like the whole P like the whole, I guess, pie of me, (laughs) (laughs) all the people, all the things. Yeah. Um, I mean, specifically just within my career, um, You know, when I first got started out in videography, it was because I got inspired by um, this video by Sam Coulter where he Mm. was like touring around. Gotta love Sam. (laughs) And um, I just randomly came across that like YouTube video like one summer Mm. 
And it's like, if I wasn't like chilling out on like my iPad and just yeah. like, and I saw that video, like who knows if I ever would have had that spark of inspiration yeah. to lead me down this whole path. Yeah. And then. And who knows if Sam didn't follow the inspiration that he got, yeah, you know, yeah. and never made that video and it never touched you, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, so you can like, you can already see like how what like every, all these things are like, if, you know, if one thing didn't happen, then mm -hmm. this wouldn't happen and that wouldn't happen. Yeah. And I can, I can say that for like the majority of my career, there's just, there's just been so many opportunities, so many people yeah. who have supported me in my career. Like if yeah. I didn't have like the amount of support from uh, initially from like, you know, my parents who mm -hmm. bought me like my first like Canon ADD for Christmas oh, huge was like a huge um, enabler in my career to like really chase after this now that I had like something that I could really, you know, immerse myself in now that I had the tools to, um, to really engage in that activity. Yeah. And then on top of that, having a super supportive, um, high school who was just like, who loved everything that I did and was very mm. encouraging to me to like really push myself Yeah. very early on. Like it wasn't even a career at that point, but just like, um, it was a dream if nothing else. It was like, you, yeah. you knew there was like something there and it gave you a certain set of feelings where you felt inspired and motivated to oh, do yeah. it. Yeah. And I like imagine like if I was like in a much more like negative environment where people were like putting oh, me yeah. down and saying like, Oh yeah. dude, like your videos are trash. Like you're never yeah. going to match anything. Yeah. It could have ended like right there. Very well. Yeah. Um, Cause you didn't have like the confidence in it yet. You're still kind yeah. of exploring like, Oh, do I want to do this? Do I want to pursue something yeah. that makes me feel this way? You know? And early on, it can be hard to distinguish between, you know, your, your confidence and ability to do something and other people's view of that, you yeah. know, cause you know, we say all the time, like, Oh, don't, you know, don't care what people think and, you know, follow your dreams. But how hard is that to do? Like, that's so hard. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. In today's nature where like, there's just like so much comparison going around, Dude, like so much, it's yeah. so hard to like truly be your like genuine self. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I can say like, when I first started in my career, like I was like on the complete introverted side, like yeah. as far like <laughs> left as you can imagine on the introverted side. Um, and it's been like a huge work in progress, constantly just working on myself and mm -hmm. my self-confidence, conquering my social anxiety, which it's still like, you know, I'm still working on it to this oh, day. Yeah. Same. <laughs> um, and if I didn't have like all these moments to like really help me um, explore that and, and to just like be comfortable in my own skin, then, I mean, I don't know, I, I guess I would, I would still be that, like that shy little kid mm -hmm. if I never, you know, went down this career path. Yeah. So you're saying like, even like the fact that you picked up a camera kind of pushed you socially and like, yeah, dude, I think really early on, I, I was able to recognize that like, my camera could be a really powerful tool mm. in helping me conquer my social anxiety. I mean, I did use it as a crutch like really early on to like help me, you know, put myself in really social environments um, because I, I was, I knew that like bringing my camera around, like people always like loved being on camera yeah. and it was such like an awesome feeling being able to, you know, feel like I could be inclusive of other people in my videos and, mm -hmm. you know, them to reciprocate that feeling and them to bring me, them to bring me into like their own friend groups and yeah. their own, um, social circles. Yeah. And so that's like what initially helped me get outside of my comfort zone and, and kind of conquer, start conquering those fears. Mm -hmm. And then slowly over time, I started bringing my camera less and less to, social gatherings and really just focusing on being present as like my genuine yeah. self yeah. without the camera. And, um, yeah, dude, it's like now, now I can just kind of like go to like a social gathering and just be myself, be relaxed. And yeah. And I was it, about to add to that and confirm you in that. Yeah, bro, dude, just, you know, just like, it's all it, like, I, I wouldn't have really noticed like in the, the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you're able to carry on conversation and, um, just like be a good friend to people. You know, you, I would have never guessed that that's kind of where you came from. So it's really Thank cool. You, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. That's so I, I do think that like, 
at the very core, like I know, cause I, I know a lot of people are dealing with social anxiety themselves all the time. Yeah. Um, like it's, it's just such a common thing yeah. in today's social climate with all the sh- social media going around and all the constant comparison that I think the best thing that you can do is just like be like a good person to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and and going back and like tying this all in, it's just like trusting in God that he does have a plan for Dude, you yeah. and he will, he will help you in this journey of like conquering your fears, conquering your anxieties. Yeah. Um, well, cause and, he already did it too. Like yeah. he already conquered all of it. And so when you're like attached at the hip, when you're walking through life with a God that genuinely cares about you enough to conquer those things for you, like to me, dude, that's like the biggest blessing and the biggest motivator even to oh, yeah. like continue to push on and, and grow and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really easy, um, to, to like, just get in your head. Um, so easy. And I know for a lot of people, the thought of like, um, you know, trusting in God and having that faith is really difficult because there are so many distractions that yeah. like take you away from even being able to recognize that in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and what are the, some, what are some of the ways that you kind of like push past those distractions? Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of it has like a, a really powerful tool that I've been able to develop this year, especially more than past years is just self-awareness. Okay. I think 2023 has been the year that, uh, I guess like the year of, introspection and and reflection on my internal feelings and how I'm feeling in the moment and being able to, to like build self-awareness has like allowed me to like tap into like, um, I don't know, to more like to, to take control of my feelings. Um, especially like when I'm feeling stressed and I think everyone can Mm. relate to that, especially within the creative industries, like people are always stressing, like, how do I like, what, what's the next thing that I got to do? Like, how do I compete with like the rest of the creative market? Um, and it can be so easy to get into your head and to get into like this super stressed headspace and to stay in it. Um, but I feel like nowadays, like, like I'm able to recognize when I feel stressed and, um, and attack it head on by doing things like just like, taking a deep breath. I know it mm. sounds like really simple, but cliche, um, cliche things are true. I'm, yeah. I might add, like if something, if someone says like, Oh, well, that's just cliche. It's because it's so tr- rooted in truth that we've said it over and over and it's been tried and, and proven. Yeah. So dude, if something's cliche, pay attention. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually. Um, I tried like therapy out for the first time. Um, really? How'd this that year. go? Um, honestly, it wasn't for me. And, and, I don't know, maybe I just didn't have like a really quality therapist. Okay. Um, but there was, there was one thing that I took away from like the whole, like, like all the interactions that I had and it was like this one breath practice and it was like the, the act of just taking a deep breath, like as, and filling up your lungs as much as you can and then taking like another breath on top of that. So it's like... And do I, I, I feel like I do that like on like a date, like a, really? it's like a daily ritual almost. I do it like multiple times throughout the day. When it causes you to pause too, like at the top, you're like all the way in and then another to like make you really think and like calm yeah. down. I like that. Yeah. Honestly, I was like really nice just doing that right now. <laughs> oh, I bet, bro. Um, I'll do it one time. Yeah, wow. Man. Yeah. That hits, bro. That Dude, hits. It's, it's nice, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I love that. That's, I've been able to do that um, a lot with like whenever I, I'm experiencing social anxiety, whenever I'm yeah. like out in public or at the gym, which can be like a very intimidating environment. I just, I do that and it just like, it grounds me again. Mm-hmm. And I can, I feel like I can just be like, oh, like, why am I like so in my head right now? Like, like everything's fine. Like no one's like looking at me. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, I can just be present 
with myself and be comfortable mm-hmm. with myself in the moment. And that, that applies to social anxiety. That also applies to like when I'm feeling really stressed and I feel like I have a lot of things that I need to accomplish in the day. It's like, oh, like everything's going to like sort itself out. Like yeah. everything's sorted itself out for like the past, like 22 years of living. <laughs> God's got it. He's already done. Yeah. yeah. God's, God's got it all handled. Like, yeah. um, like why stress like so much in the moment when yeah. I know, yeah, you know, everything's going to be all right. Um, yeah. And I feel like the more that you can like actively like do that, it, like it, it just starts off with like, you know, maybe taking like, like one of those like deep breaths, like once a day mm-hmm. and then, you know, or just doing that on repetition mm-hmm. over and over and over again. Like you just implement that in, as like a, a daily essential in your, mm-hmm. your lifestyle, whenever you are feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. And, and that, that's what like has helped me like build my own self-awareness. That's like what's yeah. worked for me personally. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit of like active faith as well. Like the Bible talks about having active faith and what does that look like? Um, you know, cause there's stagnant faith where you're just mm-hmm. like, Oh, like God's got it. I don't have to do anything. But active faith is understanding that God has already conquered all, that he's already died on the cross and that there is nothing you necessarily need to worry about. But at the same time, we're humans with emotions, with the ability to choose um, like free will. And so like doing something even as simple as that and like breathing in again and like causing yourself to pause and rest in the fact that God has conquered Mm -hmm. all and that you don't have to worry about things that's actively like having faith in God, Yeah, you know, and not just like, Oh, well I can just go do whatever I want and be fine. You know? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's always there. Um, he's always there for you, whether you like realize it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's actually like a little, um, there's like a little phrase, like flag that my mom like got me. Um, that she like hung in my car yeah and she also like hung one in like my room and I don't exactly remember it word for word but it goes along the lines of um, Lord there's nothing that will happen today that you and I can't conquer together mm. something like that mm. um, I like that and I mean it's, it's true yeah you know, there's he, he's always there for you yeah when you're feeling stressed um, when you're feeling like overwhelmed yeah and also He's also there for you when things are going well um, yeah. and things are like looking up. Yep. He's the one enabling those experiences for mm-hmm. you. Yeah. And like, and all these ups and downs, like they're natural and they're necessary. Like you need to percent like as, as nice as it would be to like live in like happy mode forever. <laughs> Just on top of the yeah. mountaintop. Um, well, you even mentioned like hiking earlier when we were talking about Cape town. Yeah. It's like, if you didn't even have to go through the pain to get to the top of the mountain. I don't know. I mean, not that there still wouldn't be the appreciation for the view, but I don't think the appreciation would be as big, especially if it happened over and over and over again. Yeah. I mean, you imagine know? like there was like an elevator to going to straight to the top elevator, of the mountain. helicopter. It just does not have the same like satisfaction. Oh yeah. You know, so. I think, you know, pain and struggle is that that's why it's essential. Like it, it helped like, there's like that super common phrase, like pain makes you only grow stronger. Yeah. No pain, no gain. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And, um, and I feel like pain and struggle builds some of like the, the strongest individuals on earth. I mean, if you look at some of like a lot of, like a lot of the world leaders, a lot of the most successful business people, they've, they've had to like fight their own demons. Mm-hmm. They've had to like mm-hmm. engage and like, and, and conquer them to, to get to the point like where they are today. Yeah. Um, and you know, that that's like not necessarily the case for everyone. I mean, personally for me, like I am extremely fortunate to recognize that I don't really like have like any trauma. I don't really have mm. any dark experiences that you had a healthy upbringing. Yeah. yeah. Um, very fortunate. And I know that's not the reality for a lot of other people. Um, but if you can see, if you can recognize that, like your pain, like will, and your struggle, like will can like mold you into like an incredible human being. 
then like you'll be completely unstoppable. Mm. Um, and for the people who kind of are living very like healthy lifestyles where they don't have that trauma, um, the way that I've been able to like push myself mm. um, um, alongside like other people who have like that driven, motivated, um, I don't know, just like just to find like driving motivation in myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, like like I said before, like travel is a great teacher, and mm. I've I've been able to experience like pain and suffering through other people by just like being in cultures and what like where immersing yourself they don't immersing myself in cultures where they they don't have anything yeah and like they they constantly like are living like day by day just Mm. barely like scraping by um and you can tell like they're either like they're not eating enough they're not getting enough sleep they're they're just like they're living off like the bare minimum Mm -hmm. and um and to see those to have those experiences like seeing people living in such um degrading environments Dude, yeah. can like really make you so grateful for how awesome we have it like here in the yeah. u.s like so much it humbles so much, you it yeah puts you, it brings you to a point of like oh so sick that i grew up this way but this isn't necessarily normal yeah. for most of the world yeah And I think that's like what drives me the most. It's like, I owe it to everyone who would dream of being in a position like mine Mm. to like work my butt off. Mm. Um, You're like like, kind of giving yourself accountability in a way, like self accountability, but also attaching it to something outside of yourself to help you like push forward. And yeah. Yeah. And I mean like, and there's like levels to it. Like I know like a lot of people around the world would, would dream of just like, like living in the U S and like not having to worry about all these like problems. Like, like, am I even going to like make it to the next day? Yeah. Um, because like I'm surrounded by war and I'm surrounded by just like constant danger. Dude. Yeah. Um, even everything happening over in the middle East right now uh, in, dude, in Israel, yeah. it's like, like we're so far removed from that and, and we are drawing attention to it and showing awareness, getting awareness of it. But like we still can't necessarily feel what even they're going through Mm -hmm. right now. And like to imagine going through something like that is crazy. And who knows, like it may come to America someday and it may like wake a lot of us up to the realities of like what goes on. Um, Cause we definitely do live in kind of like a bubble, you know? Yeah, dude, I I do think we, we desperate, like I think society in the Western world desperately needs like, that wake up call yeah um hopefully not to the extreme from like you know engaging in war but um nobody wants that i feel like a lot of the western world is just so engaged with themselves um they they kind of think that like we're the center of the world Mm -hmm. um but that's why i say go and travel go and like experience Mm -hmm. these other cultures and see what life is like out there um yeah and you'll, you'll probably come home with a much more, um, just grateful experience for, for life and how you're experiencing it compared to others. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that's like a big, like motivator even for the type of content you post about? Cause it's not like you're always creating travel content, Mm -hmm. but that's something that you post quite a bit. Um, cause I know for me like that, like I post, certain things that I do, um, and, and certain things I experience when I travel, um, to try to either inspire people to go do it themselves or to, um, like experience just a little bit, like a taste of that and maybe even get some perspective. Yeah. Um, I think that's like what a lot of, if not every creator like strives to do is just to inspire others to either, you know, chase that lifestyle for themselves Mm -hmm. or even just like make small improvements in their own life to, to improve their own happiness and their own, um, uh, damn, (laughs) man, we might have to like, dude, no, you're good, bro. I mean, I think what you're saying is, is completely like correct, right? Like we have, 
an obligation, not necessarily to the other people, but we have an obligation to share like our experiences, Mm -hmm. um, not to hold them over people, but to just like inspire and, and to show people like, you know, what's out there. And for me, it's like, it's not necessarily in an, in an influencing way, but it's just like, there are people in my family and close friends where I'm just like, yo, like, this is so cool. You should go see it. Um, you know, these people are epic. You should go meet them, whatever yeah. it is like to be able to, to inspire people to like go travel. Um, you know, cause people inspired me when I was younger and it, it caused me to kind of like have that itch to go see more because, you know, whether I was watching, uh, you know, PBS kids or like watching stuff as a yeah. kid that kind of like gave me a glimpse into Africa or to Asia and the different kind of lifestyles that are out there. It made me want to go find that out myself instead of just reading it in books, just watching yeah. it on TV. Yeah. I mean, I think it goes back to just like us being a product of, um, I guess like our inspirations now. I yeah. Mean, I mean, you know, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't inspired by Sam Coulter initially. Yeah. Um, Sam Coulter wouldn't have done what he's doing if he wasn't inspired mm-hmm. by who knows like the films that he watched growing yep. up. Um, and I feel like, yeah, we're, we're just like, everyone has like their own role models that they look yeah. up to. And um, we're all like a product of just generations and generations of inspiration, just going back like yeah. all the way to the beginning of time. Dude, I yeah. totally agree, bro. I totally agree. Couldn't say, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, Speaking of like Sam Colder, social media. Yeah. Um, we're in an interesting place where for the past, you know, couple, few years, um, the idea of trends has grown bigger and bigger and bigger. What's your view on that? Like, are trends a bad thing, a good thing? Yeah, dude. I mean, social media has like evolved so fast and yeah. the whole landscape has evolved so fast over the past couple of years. Um, I know for sure, like when, Sam Coulter was first starting out in his career. Social media back then, it was just like post like whatever like you think is cool, like mm-hmm. post whatever is you. Yeah. And it was a much more community driven um, experience. Nowadays, like it's Instagram reel is a short form content. It's TikToks that dominate the, sh- the, the, the social media space. And within that, um, there are trends that people follow um and is that toxic it's um i feel like it can be beneficial and detrimental depending on how you look at it yeah um i do think that trends greatly simplify creativity because Mm. everyone is I guess doing the same thing and there, there isn't like enough people doing their own thing, like it, how it used to be back in the old days. Um, but at the same time, it's done two things. First thing is that it's like, it's made, I guess, creativity more easily accessible to the general public. Very true. So now it's cool to watch everybody create like more, more and more people get involved in creativity. Yeah. In so it's like people who, initially have may have been like intimidated by even like trying to touch video for the first time. Like now they have like a small foundation to go off of. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where you can find identity within like this whole sea of creators Mm -hmm. is recognizing that trends are just a foundation. Yeah. Um, and that's how they, they should be viewed as something to build on top of. Yeah. Um, whether because, that's if you're like just starting out or if you're a seasoned creator and you're using it as a tool to kind of like point people towards the work that you actually want to share yeah or, or like the more intense uh more complex work that you're putting mm-hmm. a lot of work into because like yeah i mean a lot of creators like nowadays are like man how do i even stand out there's just there's yeah. just so much creativity going around there's so much people doing cool things like why would anyone care about me um, in my work. And, um, if you're feeling like that, just, well, I would, I would first just say, get out and like start creating and Mm -hmm. 
generally like it, you'll, you'll find like inspiration through action. Um, and then, like I said, once you use, once you find like these trends, only do only use the trends and follow the trends that you personally identify with. Like mm -hmm. don't use like the cringy, like TikTok sounds <laughs> or Instagram real sounds just because everyone else is using them. Only use the ones that you're personally vibing with that you're mm. like nodding your head to. Yeah. <laughs> um, only use like, and then on the visual side, only follow the ones that you think are personally cool. And then once you pick a trend that you identify with, um, put your own twist on it, put your own spin on it. Mm. I mean, for me, like a lot of people know me for my high energy style. It's kind of like a punch of adrenaline every time you watch my videos. Yeah. And so I always strive to do that when I, um, to, to incorporate that style whenever I create like an Instagram reel. And I can do that in multiple ways. Sometimes I involve like really engaging diverse like sound design yeah. on top of like the Instagram real sound to make the whole experience like much more immersive and engaging. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of just like taking the sound and adding it to the video in the app, you're taking the sound out of the app, placing it on the timeline yeah. with your video. And then you're basically creating this whole other piece of art around that centralized piece of like sound. Yeah. yeah. And like, sometimes like it can also be like, I might use, like a very slow paced song, but then I will increase the pacing of the visuals to, um, to make it super fast. So it's mm -hmm. almost like, like countering like that, that slow paced nature. It's with like, like this weird oxymoron of a video. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> I mean, I just like, that's how I find my own identity. That's what yeah. I find enjoy, enjoyable is editing in that style. And you just have to like find what works for you. Some people yeah. really enjoy like, the very slow paced style, very like static tripod mm -hmm. shots, um, more focused on composition. Other people like dynamic gimbal movements yeah, and a lot of crazy dynamic movements. So you just have to like find what works for you and 100%. then apply that to the trends that you personally identify with. And yeah. I think once you do that over and over again on repetition, you'll, you'll find that like there's an audience out there for you who oh, does yeah. care about you oh, yeah. and cares about your work. hundred percent. I totally agree, man. Like creativity is an expression, right? Mm -hmm. Like art is an expression. It's the way that we connect with other people and it's the way that we e express what's on the inside. And so understanding why you're wanting to make something is the key to even making it in the first place. Because if you're just making something because it looks cool or because someone else did it, then you're completely missing the point of what creativity is, whether you're just getting started and learning how to create reels or whether you're a seasoned artist that has done all this reflection. If you're not like putting that into the piece of work, then yeah. it's not going to be heard by people and it's not going to resonate with people. And then at that point, you're just creating for an algorithm. You're not creating yeah. for people. And at the end of the day, the algorithm brings the people, right? It's, it's like the middleman. Mm -hmm. But the algorithm isn't the one that you connect with. And yeah. it's not the one that's going to understand Absolutely. what you're creating. The people are going to understand what you're creating. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be the ones that are receptive to like the message that you're yes. trying to portray. Yeah, dude. Like, it's, like don't create for the sake of creating. Like create with purpose mm -hmm. and create with intention. Um, yeah. And, and you'll recognize over time that, yeah, those people that you're looking for will naturally flock over to you. They will, bro. Um, and, and, and on top of that, you will be able to take inspiration from those people that you identify with. Yeah. And it's just like an endless cycle. And the community just continues yeah. to build each other up and encourage. So you just have to, you have to trust in that process. It can be like difficult to, to have that early on when you're first starting out, but you know, you trust in the process, you trust yeah. in God yep. and, um, and yeah will work out yeah bro when i think even to add to that uh understanding the deeper meaning behind the purpose it's like mm -hmm. okay this makes me feel this way so i'm going to create something that is an extension of that but then also you know as we pursue the lord and pursue his calling for our lives we understand that there's a deeper purpose behind why we're even put in a position to use our gifts and talents in this way. And it's not necessarily just because 
this is a feeling that we're having and it can resonate with somebody. But as you were talking about earlier, there's a providential nature of God. He is all knowing, all seeing, and he, you know, there's not a beginning or an end to him. And so he knows everything that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so in our lives to be able to trust a God like that, that has like sovereign nature over everything that we do in life yeah, and to understand that, Hey, like I'm not just creating this because it feels good, but I'm creating this because I'm being obedient to the God who gave me life. And then I get to like follow his plan that he's laid out in such detail to the point where even a small little Instagram reel can have a giant play in, you know, um, a moment down the road where God's going to use you to speak into one person or God's going to use you to be a part of a big picture, a big turning point in society or um, helping someone find the loving nature of God as well Mm -hmm. and being able to help someone out of a dark place, whatever it is, like there are so many moments that he's designed and to be able to understand that purpose and play into it and take like stewardship of that is bro. It's, it's so huge. Yeah, man. And I think a lot, I think beyond just like creating with purpose, Mm -hmm. people should just like apply that to their day-to-day life. Just like act with purpose, like act with intention in everything that you tackle. Um, whether that's like, you know, your career, your relationships, Mm -hmm. um, just like your thoughts and just becoming the person that you want to be. Mm -hmm. Um, feel like with like a lot of the self-awareness that I've built this year, I've been able to be intentional with like Mm. how I'm using my time, what I'm giving my attention to. Um, I've like largely detached myself from social media this year. Yeah. Um, through like social media detoxes and, um, reading books, like slowing my brain down. Yeah. Um, staying away from like the short form content. Yeah. Um, and that's allowed me to just be more focused on the present, um, focus on like my relationships with like my family, mm. uh, my mom, my dad, my brothers. It feels like I've really like built those relationships this year because mm. I've, uh, I've been able to like take a step back from the intensity of life in general. I mean, like it's so easy to constantly live in a state of stress and anxiety. There's always something else to worry about. Yeah, There's there's (laughs) always going to be something like on your mind, like always going to be something that you have to be working on. But when you can slow your life down and you can recognize like, Oh, like maybe I shouldn't like be in my head. Maybe I should just like sit down and like enjoy this conversation with my dad and like, not worry about um like getting this video done because Mm. at the end of the day like 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 i said like we've been talking about before like god has a plan for us and he will help you through everything so just have have faith in him that everything will work itself out yeah and you know all of us like have been alive for however old we are and like, we wouldn't be where we are today without, you know, having him alongside us. hundred percent, bro. He's there like guiding us in secret mm-hmm. and he's there constantly like in the good times and the bad times. He's, mm-hmm. he's constantly there for us, um, whether we realize it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, Amen, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm at church right now, bro. I'm preaching. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I freaking love it, bro. It's, I mean, yeah, it's so cool to have seen you grow this year too. Like I think 2023, like you were saying, has been a big year. And I know you realize that for yourself, but even from the outside looking in, um, it it has been big. Like you've, you've taken huge strides when it comes to relationships, man. Like, I mean, even in our friendship and, and friendships in our community that I've, I've watched like unfold with you, um, you have such a level of care for people and you show that in conversation, you show that in action. Um, there's never a moment where I've ever thought, Oh, like Jacob just goes through life, like willy nilly, like not really giving a care or, or or just like using people or whatnot. You, 
you have such an intentionality when it comes to your actions with people. And it's really cool to see, bro. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that. Of course. Dude. I've, I've been yeah. working really hard on that aspect of my life, just being intentional with the people that I'm surround myself with. Mm -hmm. The most like valuable, important gift that you can give to someone else is like your undivided attention um, and showing that like you're present there for them mm -hmm. and that, you know, like nothing else matters in the world besides like this moment that I'm like sharing with you and like giving someone that attention. I mean, if, if we did that to like every person that we like came across, I'm sure. Like suicide, suicide drop, like rates would drop to like zero. Oh, I'm sure. Well, not zero just because we live in a broken world, but I, but no, like, I see your sentiment. Close, and I agree pretty, with pretty dang close to pretty it. Pretty dang close. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just like, you know, we're all, we're all brothers and sisters, like figuring out life together. 100%. Where we all have our own problems, our own trauma that yep. we're all working towards um, solving. Yeah. And I think we would get to solving those issues a lot faster. We would. If we did it together. Yeah. And like, I mean, this like kind of like ties up almost like everything. Like, like I said, we're, we're a product of our inspirations. We're yep. a product of people taking a chance on us, people giving us opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. And so like, we wouldn't be where we are today without someone else helping us along the way. 100%. I agree. And even to go back to the point about like, um, pouring into people being intentional in present moment with them. Um, it's very hard to do that if you're not intentional with yourself. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, you're not intentional with God because if you're grounded in your identity in Christ, you're grounded in your, in your identity and who you are in Christ, yeah. then dude, it gives you like a really unique ability to have an outward look on other people without uh, allowing their actions or the way they think to dictate what you do, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where you can have like the boldness that you're talking about to yes. be able to be present like that. Yeah, it, it, it starts with God. He's there to initially ground you. And then once you find confidence in that relationship with him, that'll help you find confidence in yourself yeah. and once you do that then once once you've worked on yourself because like that's like that's you need to do that before you can like start helping other people yep so yeah, you know it's like the, that, that the one saying like put on your own oxygen max first mm -hmm. you have to work on yourself and and once once you do find that clarity that's when you can give back to yep. others yep um whether that's like in the form of attention, whether that's like in the form of an opportunity. I mean, it's what I've like tried to actively do this year. Now that I've spent a lot of time working on myself um, and, and now that I have that kind of clarity and I've also had a, a, li a little bit more financial stability this yep. year is giving opportunities to creators that like I see potential in. Mm. Um, and I think that's been like one of the most fulfilling things that I've done this year. Mm -hmm. is um, giving opportunities to a whole multitude of creators. Um, That's awesome. And I've brought them on to like my productions, brought them on yeah. to like my teams. And dude, it's it's such a fulfilling experience being able to to give that back to others. Dude, yeah, bro. And, and it definitely shows like the work that you've done. Um, and I've definitely seen from my point of view, like, your ability to pour into other people and, and, uh, and even just, um, grow your productions to another level. You know, you talk about like the opportunities that you got, like right out of college or as you were in college and, you know, being able to create things for other people, but now you're in a leadership position. You're able, you're able to kind of like create opportunities for other people and deal with those relationships yeah. on set, um, as a part of the, pr the pre-production post-production, like as part of the whole project. Um, it's definitely shown. So that's, thank that's you, bro. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I haven't necessarily posted a lot this year, but it's because I've been focusing on intentionality mm -hmm. and pouring in quality, not only into these productions, into like my work, yeah. but also the team members that I bring on, just making sure that everyone feels comfortable. Everyone feels appreciated. 
um, that they're not being like overworked mm-hmm. and um, giving that intentionality to the productions that I'm on and just yeah. like to like all my experiences in general this year has just like made me much more fulfilled as a person overall. Heck yeah, bro. Yeah. That's so awesome, bro. What do you, um, what do you see like going forward in 2024? What's that year kind of look like for you? Yeah. Um, I've been trying to give it a lot of thought. Um, it's been tough because one of like my biggest driving value for the longest time was becoming a travel filmmaker. Mm. And over the past two years, I've like been able to manifest that You've done it yeah so it's like a lot of people were asking me like oh what's that next big mountain that you're gonna climb and i'm still in the process of figuring it out yeah um there's a lot of there's a couple of things that are like tickling my brain um music production is is one of them okay um this year i've really immersed myself in music festivals like edm culture and um I think it would be super awesome to just like learn music production, produce my own music. Um, that that's like one path that I could take. There, there's so many different paths. Like I could go. That's kind of exciting. Not yeah, gonna lie. I mean that's if I, if your rep as an editor and a sound designer says anything, <laughs> dude, that actually gets me hyped for any music that you put out. <laughs> dude, I, I have these like musical ideas in my brain. I just don't know how to put them out onto paper so if yeah. i just sit down and like learn the software you'll figure I'm it sure out i can like sure. create some bangers for oh sure. yeah <laughs> dude what, what's your name gonna be if you, if you go that route dude oh, that's a good one um <laughs> we'll circle back on that <laughs> yeah absolutely i <laughs> gotta find a gotta find an amazing name uh for if you your, guys for have a name career. leave it in the comments leave it in the comments leave, if, leave you, if you have a name leave it in the comments <laughs> um <laughs> I love that, bro. Well, dude, thank you so much for, for coming on today, bro, and talking. Um, like I said, your work is amazing. And, you know, the level of intentional intentionality you put in it is unparalleled. Um, and, and it definitely shows. So, yeah. Thank you, bro. I'm, I'm so glad that I was able to spend this time with you today, just talking, chatting. And I'm sure there's so many other things that we could have talked about. But Always, Um, always. But that's the beauty of life, you know, like it's an endless conversation, endless conversation, (laughs) endless learning patterns and growth patterns. And I don't know, it's just beautiful. I mean, you talk about even, you know, how you became a travel filmmaker and that was your dream, you know, Mm -hmm. but now you get to tackle something else and like God put something else in your in your path because that's who we are in nature as humans. Like we have it's an ever growing like um tree or whatever you want to call it it's a it's a it's a it's a process that never ends just working on ourselves to become the best version of we can in whatever we do yeah bro and even when we get to to heaven and like spend eternity with the lord like that's going to be another like continuation of that like it doesn't end mm-hmm. when we pass away and that, yeah. that's exciting to me bro that's exciting absolutely to me. so dude well sick 24 2024 here we come gonna be a big um, year gonna be a big year um i mean when this releases it'll probably be january so i'm sure like you'll already be kind of in that flow but again bro thank you for for hopping on it's it's been a joy to talk and um i'll leave all your stuff below in the comments and people can check you out and sweet follow along um awesome. and you should you should follow along. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, bro, I, I really appreciate it. So hope everything continues to go well. Thanks, bro. Well, 100%. percent very stoked <laughs> for the journey that I'm about to embark on this next year. Let's go, dude. Let's and go. stoked for all of you guys to follow along <laughs> and for me to follow along your journeys as well. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. And if you have any questions for him or um, any questions about like filmmaking, production, whatever, dude, from experience, Jacob is an open book. He really cares about people and he cares about giving opportunities and giving advice. And so, dude, hit him in the DMs. I'm sure he'd love to answer questions um, and get to know you guys. So, yeah. You heard it. He's a resource. (laughs) He's a very good resource. Um, But, yeah, um, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I'm really excited for, you know, all these episodes coming out and and the conversations that we get to have um, and the ways that we get to kind of explore our purpose and and why that is and why God created us to create and why God created us to 
um, connect with people. It's all I want for this podcast and this community. So, um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, like it, subscribe, um, share it with a friend. Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, as always, um, just go create. Just go uh, keep creating. Absolutely. Create in the name of the Lord. Heck yeah, bro. Amen. 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 Hey. Dude, thank you so much. Heck yeah, bro. Let's go. Peace. Woo.